Good evening, welcome to the ITV News in London. Tonight's main stories. Another cyclist tragically killed, the fourth in eight days. The mayor says London's roads are safe. We'll be looking very, very carefully to see what went on there, to see if there are any lessons we can, uh, we can draw. What's pollution doing to our kids? And is London's low emission zone failing to protect them? Why roadworks could be a thing of the past, the underground robot fixing London's pipes and... <laughs> Remembering the Dam Busters, 70 years on, the London tribute to our war heroes. Hello, I'm Lucrezia Mullerini. A young woman has become the fourth cyclist killed in just eight days on London's roads. She died after colliding with a lorry this morning while using the cycle superhighway at the Bow Roundabout. Today, the mayor described her death as a tragedy. Tonight, a mass protest has been organised at the scene of the accident in East London. We'll be live there as campaigners demand better safety for cyclists. But first, Glenn Goodman reports on yet another horrific accident on the capital's streets. It's become a depressingly frequent sight for the emergency services, a bicycle in collision with a lorry. Here at Bow Roundabout, another cyclist has lost her life on London's roads, the fourth in just eight days. This accident happened on the Mayor's Cycle Superhighway extension, which he officially opened just a week ago. In 2011, another cyclist, Brian Dawling, died on this same roundabout and as a result many changes were made to improve the situation. For example they brought in those concrete dividers that you can see there that separate the bicycles from the main traffic. And they also changed the traffic lights so that bicycles get their own special lights that give them a few seconds lead over the main traffic. Unfortunately in this case none of that was enough to save this woman's life. Critics say the changes actually make things worse, not better, that having several sets of lights and stop lines just confuses motorists and cyclists. In this example, filmed by a cycling blogger, the traffic is flowing and a cyclist ignores his stop signal at Bow Roundabout. Perhaps he knows he's breaking the law, or maybe he doesn't realise he's got it wrong because he's just moving with the traffic as he normally would. The mayor believes the figures show his strategy is working. The number of deaths on London's roads involving pedals, pedal cycles is uh, lower now than it was perhaps five uh, or ten years ago. Uh, and that is in spite of a huge increase in the number of journeys by bike. Cycling campaigners argue even one death is one too many. In the past eight days, four people, including 62-year-old hospital porter Brian Holt and 69-year-old Francis Golding, have lost their lives. The question is, do the blue lines and the other safety changes make things better or worse? Glenn Goodman, ITV News, Bow. Well, the protest is taking place right now at Bow Roundabout. Our political correspondent, Simon Harris, is there. Simon. Lucrezia, this is supposed to be a safe roundabout for cyclists, not a dangerous one. The early start traffic light for bike riders is meant to do what it says and give them an early start over cars, lorries and buses. But in fact, what it, all, what it really does is allow them to advance just 15 metres to another red light. And when they get to that one, the head start they have is less than two seconds, 1.9 seconds. I timed it earlier today. Well, with me now is Tom Bogdanovich from the London Cycling Campaign, one of the organisers of tonight's protest here. Tom, just how confusing is this? Well, it's tragic to be here for the third time, and I'm sorry for the family, but you can see the problem um, just, just over there. You can see cars in this stop, stop area for the cyclists, and the cars are actually occupying it when they're not supposed to be in there at all. So it's simply not working. London Cycling Campaign, when this superhighway was first planned, said that this was not right. It was incorrect, and basically they should not install this superhighway at that time. They installed it, two people died. They installed a different system and it's still not working. We warned them about that. We really need to address this. We really need to do something so that no more is, no, no more is happens on, at this spot. You said when you first came to this junction, you couldn't work it out. No, it was an, entirely confusing. And anyone who comes to this junction riding in, not having used it many times before, will be confused. There are several lights here. There's one light here, one light there, and they're not sure which light they should be obeying, which is confusing for the cyclists. So they put up signs, but 
they shouldn't need to put up signs. So what's the answer? The answer is to create the sort of junction that they would have in Holland. I mean, it either keep the cyclists out of the way of the motor traffic altogether, um, taking them on a above, below, that's what the Dutch would do, or creating what was suggested, which is separate toucan crossings, sort of crossings all the way around the roundabout, would help pedestrians. Too. That's expensive and it takes time. It takes time, but it has to be done. Something has to be done here to stop collisions taking place. Tom Bogdanovich, thank you very much indeed for talking to us tonight. Lucrezia, the Bow Roundabout has claimed the lives of three cyclists in two years. Tonight, campaigners are gathering here to say something must be done. And it is hard to escape the conclusion that this junction has some deadly flaw. Back to you. All right, Simon, thank you. This morning, another accident left a cyclist injured after colliding with a bus. The incident in Vauxhall came as figures were released, showing the number of buses involved with serious accidents in the capital. Over the last five years, 1,889 people have been killed or seriously injured. Ria Chatterjee reports. On Vauxhall Bridge this morning, a bike carried away intact. The collision left the cyclist with minor injuries to the leg. Yesterday morning, a similar incident in Kennington led to more serious injuries. A new report from the Greater London Authority reveals nearly 2,000 individuals have been killed or seriously injured in an accident involving a bus in the last five years. To be fair to TfL buses, they do a lot of work of training drivers and monitoring all this, but we think they should do more. And what we want now is that they publish the data for each one of the 32 London boroughs and identify the hotspot routes uh, across London. The figures don't just include cyclists, but pedestrians and road users too. However, the report mentions a 173% increase in cycling on the city's major roads since 2001. So how important is it to consider the vast nature of London's bus network when taking these figures into account? We've got 2.3 billion passengers travelling on the network. Our buses are running every few minutes during the day and during the night. Extraordinary, some 6.5 million passengers every day. It's a huge enterprise. So the number of collisions that we have and the number of people, sadly, who are killed or seriously injured, of course, one, one person killed is one too many, but it's a very small number of people in terms of the interactions going on on the network in the course of a daily basis. Transport for London insists there's no room for complacency. They say they're constantly working towards improving the design of roads and junctions and increasing public awareness through safety campaigns. The report is calling for TfL to publish regular figures on serious bus accidents. As the demand on transport infrastructure increases, so too does the expectation for the network to cope. Ria Chatterjee, ITV News. The parents of a teenage girl who went missing while being treated for depression have made the main headline in London this evening. Another cyclist has been killed on London's roads after colliding with a lorry on Bow roundabout this morning. Tonight, a protest is taking place where she died. Our political correspondent Simon Harris is there. Lucrezia, for the fourth time in a week, a cyclist has died on the streets of London. For the third time in the space of two years, a cyclist has died at the Bow Roundabout. And this fatality is the fourth involving Cycle Super Highway 2. London's Mayor Boris Johnson described it as a tragedy, but repeated that the number of deaths involving cyclists is down on five years ago, despite a huge increase in the number of bikes on the streets of London. Tonight, cycle campaigners and cyclists are gathering here for a protest. They say they've been warning for months that this junction is a death trap and something has to be done. Thank you again, Simon Harris.